All right, guys, so last episode, we got the 5.3 and the 6L80E installed in the Trans Am. Well, roughly installed in the Trans Am. Um, everything pretty much clears and fits. I still need to make a cross member for the transmission as well as uh, figure out the drive shaft situation. But the engine is pretty happy in there. The compressor clears the factory cross member. And today we're gonna be focusing on body stuff as far as the engine bay and inside the car with the whole dashboard situation. Basically, we're gonna pull the dashboard out. I'm gonna install some new insulation back there because it still has the old smelly uh, kind of mold the 80 stuff tucked up behind the dash that I want to get out. In addition to that, we're going to be tackling the engine bay, uh, getting it cleaned up, getting it painted, doing some little detail work, painting some small parts. And uh, yeah, by the end of this video, we should have a pretty damn fresh looking engine bay. So I have the engine bay about 95% broken down. We still need to remove the wiring harness and crawl under the dash to get the brake booster out. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with all the stuff that I removed. Um, I went a little further than I wanted to or was expecting to on the front end. I removed the headlights, um, the upper valance for the headlights, kind of the support bar because I wanted to get that painted and I saw some rust in the front I want to address. But next thing we're gonna do is pull the C100 harness out from the firewall. Now removing this harness is pretty simple and if you guys remember in a previous video, um, I told you that that is the important harness that you do not want to remove. Whether you're doing an LT swap, an LS swap, um, a Gen 2 LT swap, that harness needs to stay because that's going to supply power to the interior accessories. It has all the uh, wiring for your gauges as well as uh, the wires that run down to the starter. So with everything else already disconnected, it's time to move over to the C100 connector and remove it from the firewall. To do this, it's simply just held in place with a quarter inch headed bolt. It runs right through the center of the connector 
and with that loosened up, the hole connector just simply unplugs from the bulkhead on the firewall. Now, first thing you're gonna notice here is there's gonna be this sticky, tarry black substance all over the pins. This is just grease that the factory puts on there, so don't worry, the connector isn't melted or damaged. And with that unplugged, we just have this separate little harness that runs through this grommet under the dashboard. Now, being this is a Firebird and has the pop-up headlights, I'm assuming this is the connector uh, for the pop-up headlight motors. My Camaro's the same year and it didn't have this. Now, being this harness does contain the wiring going to the headlights and all the lighting in the front end. Uh, just be aware there are a couple of grounding points at the core support. I think there's one on each side that's held to the chassis with a 10 millimeter headed uh, self-tapping screw. One on both sides. There may be another one here or there. Uh, just keep a lookout for any grounding points and slowly kind of route the harness through the core support. It's also held in place with some clips underneath the core support that runs along the radiator. But with all those already disconnected, none of the wiring cut hacked, twisted, chafed, chainsawed, burned, scorched, ripped, did I say cut? Just cleanly unplugged and removed from the bay. We can set it aside because this is gonna be going back in the car. And if you happen to have already done any of those things listed um, to this harness, your car is not gonna start. I can guarantee it. So here's the whole C100 harness removed, nothing cut, everything unplugged and laid out pretty much how it sits on the car. We have the connection at the firewall that runs down along the frame rail that goes to the headlights, all the turn signal bulbs, as well as the headlight motors. Coming along this way, it goes over to the engine, starter wires, all the engine sensor wires, um, as far as the gauges go, and the fan controller relay over there. So for now, we're just gonna set this aside. We're gonna address this in a future video. We're gonna strip it down, put new loom on it, cut any wires we're not gonna need, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get these wires to work with those gauges with a new motor. All right, so we're getting there. Uh, most of the stuff is out of the bay. I'm going to take the booster out once we get the dash out, just because it's going to be easier and I'm pulling it anyway. Um, I did notice when I pulled the master cylinder, there was quite a bit of brake fluid coming out between the connection where the cylinder sits against the booster. I have a new master cylinder going on as well as a new brake booster, so all this is going to get replaced. And you can see with the C100 harness removed, it's a little bit easier to get around to actually get everything painted. Now, before we move on to getting the dashboard out and starting to prep the bay, I do want to touch on the last two remaining harnesses that I have in here. This one down here is for the cruise control, and I'm just simply going to pull that through the firewall and toss it. Um, if I want to hook up cruise control with a new motor, that's going to go through the PCM anyway, so all this isn't going to be needed. And then over here, we have the separate harness for the air conditioning. This houses the wiring going to the blower motor resistor, as well as the main power to the blower motor, uh, the low pressure AC switch, and this little vacuum hose is the uh, vent controller that goes to the motor and that actually controls the positioning of the vents um, when you switch the dial on the dash. So removing this dashboard is actually easier than you may think. We're gonna start by removing the pad, which is held in place to the firewall with four Phillips head screws that grow through the dash pad into the firewall itself. Then we're gonna hop underneath and remove the screws going through the plastic dashboard into the pad. Now the whole dashboard is basically held together with a combination of 10 millimeter, seven millimeter, five and a half millimeter, and Phillips head screws. And there may be an eight in there uh, somewhere, but those are basically the socket you're gonna to need to get this thing out. And with those screws removed, we can simply slide the dash pad back and pull it out of the car. Now with the pad removed, we have access to the seven millimeter screws holding the top of the dash to the firewall. You can see there's gonna be two on each side by the speaker housings, and then there's gonna be one in the middle going through a single bracket. Now I did decide to remove the speakers along with these screws just cause I have a new pair going in, but with everything removed holding the top of the dashboard to the firewall, it's time to hop underneath and start removing the screws down below. Now just like the top, there's gonna to be quite a few seven millimeter bolts or five and a half millimeter bolts depending on who is in your car and who's kind of moved all the screws around. Um, in my case, I had a couple of seven millimeters holding the lower dash here to the heater box, as well as one holding the harness to the box as well. Hopping over to the passenger side lower dash, we have this one 10 millimeter headed main bolt that's gonna hold the bottom of the dash to this bracket mounted to the body. With this out, you can see the entire dashboard basically slides forward and there's really not much holding it in at this point. 
Now we're gonna jump on over to the driver's side and same thing, just kind of remove these bolts and these trim pieces. That's gonna allow us to get to some screws behind those as well as disconnect the wiring going to these switches. Now we are gonna be pulling the dashboard with the harness attached. So uh, you just wanna make sure that you kind of leave all the wiring connected to the dashboard itself. Don't go out of your way trying to disconnect it and push it away from the uh, clips that hold it to the plastic dash because you're just gonna make it harder for yourself. And all of this is gonna be coming out as one assembly next we're gonna hop back up to the instrument cluster and remove the trim surrounding that uh, with that disconnected we'll just unplug the connectors going to the dash switches and that's gonna allow us access to remove this trim piece on the lower passenger side hopping back over to the driver's side in no specific order while doing this we're gonna remove the same trim piece and that's gonna allow us access to the two 13 millimeter nuts that are holding the steering column to the dashboard bracket now with these two nuts removed, you can see the steering column floats independently away from the dashboard itself. With this done, I'm just gonna hop back up top and remove the instrument cluster. This isn't required, but I figured I'll give it a nice cleaning and check for any further mouth's damage. And with that done, that pretty much does it for all the fasteners holding this dashboard in. There really aren't a lot of bolts that you would think. And uh, with that finish, you can see the dashboard easily pulls away and we're able to disconnect all the wiring holding it together. Now coming over here, there's going to be some wires going to the stereo specifically um, from the radio to the speaker harness, as well as I think a few um, kind of connecting to the climate controls. There's also going to be some going to your engine computer if you still have that wiring installed, as well as your uh, vehicle speed sensor buffer box which you can see right here next we're gonna hop over to the driver's side and I'm just gonna disconnect the fuse box from the dash this is coming out with the dash harness but it's just a little bit easier to get to the couple of connectors that are actually plugged into the back there's gonna be one orange wire that goes from the uh, fuse box here over to the left side of the body kind of where uh, the wiring is that passes through to go to the door there's also gonna be like a pink wire that branches out and clips into this. And they're just basically held in place with um, a regular clip connector. You can remove them. And then uh, all the connectors going to the steering column for the cruise control switch, uh, the brake switch, as well as the turn signal switch. Now, depending if you have a Camaro or a Firebird, depending on the year, uh, some of these connectors may be different, but basically just disconnect the stuff going from the body to the dash harness. Now, coming back into the engine bay, we can now disconnect the C100 bulkhead from the firewall. This is the last connection of the dash harness to the body itself. And with that clipped out, we can easily pull the dashboard out before getting stuck on the wiring going through the center console. Yeah, I basically forgot to disconnect the wiring uh, from the dash harness to the neutral safety switch as well as the parking brake. But once those are disconnected, the dash pulled out without an issue. Now it is not required to pull your dash just to remove the brake booster, but being it is easier to do it this way, we might as well pull the booster now. After disconnecting the clip from the brake pedal, we can now zip the four 15 millimeter nuts off the booster and then simply pull it away from the firewall. Last thing I'm gonna do here is disconnect the throttle cable from the gas pedal, being we're not gonna be needing this anymore as our new motor is gonna be drive by wire. This is just clipped onto the top of the pedal and then you could just depress the clips holding the bulkhead into the firewall and the whole cable will slide right out. So you remember a few videos back when we pulled the interior, all the carpet, and I found that uh, mouse nest in the center console? Well, I think I figured out where they got all of the padding from. And uh, yeah, you, you can see this is exactly why I wanted to pull the dash. I knew there were mice in here. And um, when I did pull the carpet, I found like nuts and stuff falling towards the front of the carpet. And I didn't know how the hell they got them under the carpet because the padding was like pretty much pristine under there. But they've just been crawling up into the dash, grabbing some of the good stuff, coming back to the center console, making a house. Uh, yeah, but this is gonna be gone through in the next video. We're gonna pull the heater box out. I'm actually gonna throw a heater core in it and I'm gonna show you how to replace the heater core, which can be done in the car. You don't have to like pull the dashboard or the heater box out to change it. Once again, I just did this so I can eradicate the mice and change um, all this messed up insulation. But yeah, we're gonna pull that out. We'll do the heater core. We'll take care of the floors, take care of any rust. And then after that, uh, we'll be ready to move on to the wiring. 
All right. Finally, the bay is stripped down. I know this seems like a lot of work and it is a lot of work, but if you're uh, in the process of putting a new motor in your car, you have the engine out, you might as well just go for it. If you're trying to kind of restore the car, you want it to look good, just pull the rest of the stuff out. You could give it a nice paint job. And uh, yeah, this is probably the only time it's gonna actually be this stripped far down. So you might as well do it while the motor's out. But to prep this pretty much, uh, we're just gonna go around to all the rusted spots. I have a wire wheel that I'm gonna put on my angle grinder. We're gonna take all the uh, little rusty bubbly parts down to bare metal. From there, I'll clean those spots, hit them with some Pour 15. That's a really good rust encapsulator that's gonna make sure the rust uh, doesn't come back and bubble up our new paint. And then we could kind of scuff everything down and uh, hit it with some base and clear. I don't think I'm gonna prime this um, I'm just gonna put some primer on the bare metal spots, but everything else, the paint is in pretty good condition, so I'm just gonna scotch bright it, um, then base it and clear it. As for the battery tray, it does have a little bit of rust, and normally, um, at least the condition this one's in, I'd probably leave it, just clean it up, pour 15 it, and let it go. Uh, but for the sake of the channel, a lot of you guys probably have these cars. Um, you're in the process of doing one of these swaps, or you're just doing regular repairs to it you're most likely gonna run into this problem, so we might as well just go about replacing it. So what I have here is an OER replacement battery tray. Um, this is pretty inexpensive. I think it was like $39, 40 bucks. And it's a direct replacement as far as, you know, being stamped. So once we get this actually cut out, we can just drop that in, uh, weld it in place, a little seam sealer, it will be good to go. Now to remove this, there are a bunch of little spot welds kind of going around the perimeter. There's one right here, there's another right here. This is gonna have to get ground down so I can kind of see where they are. And um, we're just gonna go around, drill those out one at a time, and then we'll be able to pull the whole battery tray out. I'm glad I decided to replace this because we have quite a rust hole over here, kind of where the tray was overlapping. I guess all the battery acid just kind of collected here. And then this brace underneath that goes to the fender that just got dripped on with battery acid too at some point. There's nothing left of that. But just a rough fit here. You can see our new one just that easy. Just drops right in there. Um, you can just go around the perimeter here and give it a few tags if you want, or drill um, the same holes out and re-kind of spot weld it in place. Before I can get this in though, I need to address this rust. So all I'm gonna do is drill these spot welds out, probably cut it on this side, just so I can slip this bottom section out, and then I'll make up a patch panel and we can uh, weld that in along with the battery tray. And for anybody doing this at home, here's a good idea of at least where my spot welds were. We had quite a few there couple over here. It's just really, really random. I don't know if every car is going to be the same.
up. Uh, battery tray is welded in. I just drilled some holes in the tray itself and uh, basically just tack welded it the same way the factory did. I got my little patch panel installed here and everything looks uh, pretty good. This is extremely secure. And I went around the bay uh, just with the wire brush on the grinder and cleaned up any substantial amounts of rust. What we're gonna do now is come through the engine bay, kind of degrease whatever I can, and then I'm gonna apply some Pour 15 uh, to kind of the rusty spots that I sanded down, as well as any kind of um, rusty bare metal areas. So to get everything clean, I'm gonna be using Super Clean. I always use this when I have a uh, new car and I really need to get the engine bay clean. I actually degreased this entire thing before I pulled the motor out. It used to be a lot dirtier. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a hose here. So the way I'm gonna have to do this is just spray it down a little bit in an area. I'm gonna agitate it with a brush and then just kind of rinse it with a spray bottle and some water. And I'll just do that section at a time. And when it comes time to actually paint it, I'm gonna hit everything with some uh, wax grease remover just to make sure I get rid of any soapy residue. If you guys wanna pick this up, I'm gonna put a link down in the description to their website. It'll uh, show you the store locator where you can actually purchase some of this. But I've been using this for years. It's really great if you dilute it down halfway, it goes a long way. And uh, it's great even just to maintain your engine bay. Um, now and then when you wash the car, just kind of spritz it on there, hit it with the pressure washer, and it always comes out nice and clean. All right, so the bay has been sealed. Uh, next thing we just need to do is wait a day, uh, wait for all this to dry, then I'm gonna come back with some Scotch-Brite, kind of sand down the glossy areas, and then uh, we're gonna be ready to clean this thing for good. And this uh, Pour 15 on here, this is actually going to encapsulate any existing rust. The little seam along the firewall here, it's a very common problem where it starts to rot underneath. So I just kind of uh, ground that down went over the little kind of rusty spots before they get any worse. And just did that all around the bay. Any little bit of rust I saw, buffed it down and then uh, sealed it with the Pour 15. But yeah, I'm gonna let this dry overnight. Tomorrow we'll come back and uh, it's gonna be time to lay down some paint.
All right, so I know earlier in the video I said um, I wasn't planning on priming this. It was just going to be a little scuff and spray. But as you can see, um, a lot has changed in the past day or so. Basically, I started um, just sanding some spots down with scotch Bright, and I noticed there's a little bit of rust. You know how you get like a rock chip and it'll start to rust? So as I was kind of sanding scratches and rust uh, uh, rock chip spots, I started finding just little brown spots of rust underneath. So I decided just to sand the whole thing. I hit some of it with the orbital, uh, some of it, well, a lot of it by hand, getting in all these little creases and crevices, whatever. And it's pretty much ready to prime now. One thing I want to touch on, the Pour 15 wasn't a great idea for the entire bay. I basically went around and just slathered it on anything that had some rust on it. And the stuff goes on so thick, it was kind of a problem to sand it back and feather it in. It still sanded pretty good, but it was just a lot more work kind of sanding the firewall, sanding all the extra Pour 15. So I definitely recommend just using the Pour 15 on the really crusty areas, like the battery tray before I changed it. Um, the frame rail over here, it was great. It kind of, you know, it sticks to the rust. It gets in the little uh, nooks and crannies and prevents that rust from coming back. But as for all the little tiny rusty spots, the little just kind of stains, um, I'm gonna hit all them with just a rust reformer and then we're gonna go ahead and prime on top of that. So yeah, definitely Pour 15 for the heavy flaky stuff. Um, just a rust reformer or converter for uh, all the little light stuff. Once that dries, we're going to come in with this uh, Duplicolor self-etch primer. We're going to apply this to all the bare metal areas, let that dry, and then we're going to hit the entire bay with this uh, Duplicolor high build filler primer. This goes on really thick. It's almost like you're spraying a putty on everything. And it's basically going to fill the scratches in, kind of even everything out and uh, make it just uh, look a little bit nicer when the base coat goes on. So yesterday I spent about two hours completely just meticulously cleaning this bay up. Um, I went through about two or three rolls of paper towels. I used rubbing alcohol, really just got into every little crease, every little kind of overlap, all the edges of the fenders in here. Everything is spotless. So next up, we're going to tape off the windshield. I'm gonna tape off the body. I went a little further, I removed the strut mounts just because it was a little bit easier to sand around them and I don't have to tape them off. Plus I removed them when I did the shocks so I gotta get the car aligned anyway. And I also went and removed the cowl and the wiper blades because we're gonna spray this with a satin black um, while we're doing the rest of the bay here. So I'm gonna start taping and uh, yeah, in a few minutes we'll be ready to spray.
All right, first of all, if you guys made it this far, you're still watching, congratulations, because we're finally ready to put some blue on this thing. Uh, the primer's done. I went ahead and sprayed the cowl with some satin black. And uh, we'll start with the primer first. I used this Duplicolor High Build Primer. And um, a little tip so I just want to kind of give you with um, what I experienced putting this on. First of all, when I went to go spray the Self Etching Primer, I noticed it wasn't adhering too well. And um, I cleaned everything meticulously with rubbing alcohol and then with the wax and grease remover. So everything was totally clean. But still, it was kind of starting to get some fish eye when I initially sprayed it on. And that basically came down to temperature. Temperature is friggin' crucial when it comes to any kind of painting. And after touching the engine bay, I could feel it, the, the steel was ice cold. So basically, um, I ripped out the old kerosene heater, got it up to like 75, 80 degrees in here. Once the metal kind of warmed up to room temperature, uh, the the paint just went on without a problem. It flashed without an issue and um, the finish came out great. I then hit it with a few heavy coats of the Duplicolor Filler Primer. Uh, this filled in a lot of those imperfections and just kind of evened the finish out along the original primer, the base coat, you know, kind of the patchy areas uh, where some of it was bare metal, some of it was primer, some of it was paint. And uh, yeah, overall this, this came out great. Everything adhered perfectly. Um, I'm really happy with the finish on the cowl. And next up, we're gonna be taping this off and we're gonna get to spraying the base and clear. One thing for the paint I used on the cowl here, um, I use this Cryon Color Max for all of this kind of little trim detail stuff. It's a satin black. It has that like factory, um, you know, semi-gloss satin finish to it for stuff like the wiper arms, the drip rail moldings. On the Camaro, I use it for the cowl, the headlight buckets, also the drip rail moldings. And that car was painted three years ago, and this is still holding up fine. It didn't fade, it didn't flake, it still has a sheen to it. So I definitely recommend this, and I'm gonna link it down below with all the, uh, the primers and, you know, the sandpaper and stuff I used. Um, the only thing you're gonna have to go and outsource is gonna be the actual base and clear, which I'm gonna show you guys now, because I went over to automotivetouchup.com, and I got six cans, I hope this is enough, but I got six cans of the original uh, color code Pontiac 23, because I am keeping this car the original blue. And uh, yeah, we're gonna lay on a few heavy coats of this uh, base coat, make sure we get all of this gray covered up. And just another little tip, when you're spraying this, uh, well, you know, the primer, any kind of spray paint in a bay like this where there's a lot of corners and, you know, kind of annoying areas, start in the kind of annoying kind of areas where you need to aim the paint up because as the can goes down, uh, you're not gonna be able to spray those areas. So when the can's full, start out in all the kind of upside down weird areas and just work your way out. Also, make sure you work your way from the firewall out. I worked from this corner over, over to there, then this way, and then the last thing I hit was um, the radiator sport. You don't wanna have to lean over your fresh paint to kind of spray the parts you missed. But I got six cans of this base coat. I got three cans of clear, and uh, we're just gonna seal it with this after spraying the base. And I think that's finally uh, gonna finish this engine bay up. So uh, let's uh, get this taped off. We'll start uh, spraying the blue and we'll just take it from there.
All right, guys, look at this engine bay. I, I couldn't be happier the way it came out. This was a long video, um, a lot of prep, a lot of cleaning. It's literally been probably a month by now since I last uploaded something. And uh, yeah, aside from all the prep work involved in getting this right, just the snow kept coming. I had to go out and shovel it, try to get the Camaro out of here for room so I don't get paint on it. And um, overall, I'm glad I took the time. And I wanted to get this all done in one video for you. I wanted you to see the satisfaction of going from a filthy, untouched engine bay um, to basically what we have right here. The satin black on the cowl, the satin black on the cross member uh, just look absolutely perfect. And after hitting it with the Pour 15, I top coated the cross member with this VHT satin black caliper paint. I didn't have any Krylon left, which is probably a good thing because this is chemical resistant. So it's going to you know, hold up to any oil or you know, fluids that might drip on that. And now uh, the Pour 15 is going to make sure that thing doesn't get all rusty again. Uh, don't mind the overspray on the wiring harness and these lines. All these hoses, these uh, fuel lines and brake lines, they're getting ripped out and replaced. And um, from here on out, these videos are going to be long like this. And I'm aiming to get this thing up and running in probably eight episodes. I already have everything, you know, divided up. I got the parts, you know, kind of lined up what's going to be coming in. And uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be running sooner than you think. As for the uh, overall finish on this, it's not too glossy, it's not too dull. It's pretty much exactly what I wanted, exactly what you'll find like under the hood of like a regular car. Um, you know, it's not too like shiny like the outside paint. And if you're going for like a show car finish, you could by all means come in here, weld up any holes, hit it with some Bondo, um, fill the little rust pits, kind of the stuff I didn't bother to do because I just wanted a clean, um, you know, color and, you know, decent shine on it. I didn't want to put so much labor where I'm going for a show car finish. And you can come in, cut and buff the uh, clear coat and just really make this thing pop. Uh, but yeah, next video, we're going to finish up putting the stuff in here. Um, we're going to put the cowl back together, paint some small stuff, put the steering box back in, put the overflow tanks back in. We're going to hop in the car. We're going to work on the heater core. We're going to change all the insulation on the firewall, fix any rust, pour 15 the floor. Uh, yeah, next video, we're gonna get a good amount of stuff done as well. And after that, we're jumping onto the wiring, prepping the factory harness, running the engine harness, doing all the wiring inside the car. That's gonna be a big episode as well. Uh, but for now, that's gonna do it for this one. And I'm gonna link everything I use in the description as usual, all the paints, the sandpapers, the cleaners. And um, yeah, see you in the next one.